think it's wonderful that we have the plates, but ultimately you can have huge archives and collections, but until they reach the public domain and people can read about them and hear about them, um, they're still somewhat uh, not alive or more about. So at that point comes a scholar who can bring them to life and the native community that can bring them to life. <laughs> Uh, and so my plan is to, to publish a book um, based on the Merrill uh, photographs, but with a lot of narrative the story. Um, I'm not a historian of photography, but I became interested in photographs of the, of the Tlingit people and Tlingit culture uh, when I worked on the, another beautiful collection of Vincent Sobolev. Some of you have seen the result of that work, uh, the book that's called uh, Russian American Photographer in Tlingit Country, uh, Vincent Sobolev in Alaska. Uh, the Sobolev collection uh, was, uh, consists of pictures taken by an amateur. Merrill, of course, was a professional. Uh, taken in Kilsen and Angoon in the 1890s through the 1920s. And those uh, plates, the originals, are in the Alaska Historical Collection. And I worked there with the help of Jim Samar and his team. And it was just a wonderful project. But I did it because I had previously did, done research in Angoon, had a lot of friends there. And it's those people, as well as some people who live outside Angoon but have ties there, particularly Harold Jacobs who helped me identify a lot of the people in the pictures. One of the things that I really uh, consider essential is that you identify as many people in these photographs as you can. And in the case of the Tlingit culture, of all Northwest Coast culture really, you identify the crests. What really drives me up the wall is when you look at books uh, of photographs of American Indians Native Americans, First Nations, and the caption says, an unidentified Native American. And I even saw one book where I saw a picture of Mark Jacobs, Jr., who adopted me as his brother, and it says, an unidentified Indian. And I said, oh my god, uh, would you like to see your own you know, brother uh, with that kind of caption? So the book did very well. It just received an award. Uh, from American uh, Western History Association for the best book on the American West. Um, the Merrill is a different project. It's a much larger collection, and it deals with Sitka, which of course is a much larger community than Angoon or Kilsno. And the history of Sitka is, is more complex. You've got the Russians, you've got the Tlingits, and then you've got the Creoles, the uh, native Russian uh, people of mixed descent. So ultimately, I would like to produce a kind of cultural history of Sitka um, from the late 19th century through the 20s, uh, as illustrated by Merrill, or as seen through his photographic lens. Um, I would like to identify as many of his subjects, the people, as possible. It is not easy, I must say. Even uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago, when I, 30 years ago when I started my work in Sitka, and that had been my primary area where I spent most of my time, there were so many elders who could easily identify the people. Uh, just recently I sat down with one of the uh, real lead, clan leaders and elders, Herman Davis. He couldn't identify most of the people in the pictures for whom we didn't have an identification. So it's gonna be hard. Fortunately, there are some younger folks who, again, like Harold, uh, like Bob Sam, who had done their own research and they, <clears throat> they know a lot of the history. So there's hope. Uh, and of course, one can supplement interviews with Tlingit people by uh, using um, archival research, Russian sources, American newspapers, and so forth. So that's kind of an introduction. Um, I want to say that um, I called this talk a new valuable source uh, because the 200 some 
plates that Kelsey was talking about, the collection that was purchased from Pete Nielsen. It has kind of the, the cream of the crop, these kinds of images that a lot of you have seen. It's the 1904 potlatch or kui, uh, the Kaguantan uh, potlatch sponsored by the clan in the house that currently is headed by our friend, uh, my friend Andy Gamble, Anahutz, sitting right there in the back. Um, this is well known, well documented. We have a lot of the names of the people. And obviously this is gonna be kind of the gem of, of my work, my book. The new collection, the 900 plates that were um, obtained from SJ, the, the new collection that Kelsey described, it doesn't have, it, it has very few of these images of that kind of quality. Um, another set of images from the the original, let's call it the, the Pete Nielsen collection. And incidentally, what Kelsey didn't mention is that Peter Nielsen was a Tlingit gentleman, which shows that Merrill had a close friend. And I just learned from Bob Sam that they were friends, which is interesting in itself. So these are beautiful pictures of the girls from the sick training school, which later became Sheldon Jackson, the basketball team. I mean, this picture has been identified. We know all the people in it. Uh, I don't have enough time, but you know, just the first guy on the far right is Peter Simpson, and we know the names of all of the players. Or this is a gorgeous picture of Russian Orthodox um, clergy, and we know the date because 1916 was the last time Russian bishop came, and you all know what happened in 1917. The revolution put a stop to these kinds of visits. But behind him are Tlingit, members of uh, St. Michael and St. Gabriel societies, and two Orthodox societies, and their wives. And since I did research on Orthodox uh, mission uh, and faith among the Tlingit a long time ago, um, when I started that research, there were still people in the community who remembered they were little kids when this was taken, or they were told who's who. So. Someone like Mary Marks, or Albert Davis, or um, some other people said, but that's my father, and that's my uncle. So that was, uh, this picture I can, I can maybe identify half the people. Uh, so we don't have a lot of this kind of quality uh, in terms of what I want to do. I mean, I, I, let's be honest. Merrill took a lot of very beautiful pictures of birds and flowers and mountains, and those are great, but that's a project for someone else. Plus, if, I, if we print all his pictures in the book, it's going to be you know, an encyclopedia. Uh, my goal is uh, Tlingit people, Creoles, some images of uh, non-native people, and of course, of Sitka. So, so what do these... Uh, photographs from the new collection, the 900 plates, what do they contain? I think we can uh, sift through, through them and there certainly be at least 50 or maybe even more images that would enrich our understanding and appreciation of life in Sitka. In addition to the gorgeous pictures that we have from the, the first collection. For example, um, I believe this is from the second collection. I could be wrong, but my impression is this is from the second. And at the very least, I know that the man on the far left is Scotty James. Uh, and there may be another one. This gentleman, Morris White, uh, was wearing a bear shirt that later became uh, the shirt that Charlie Joseph used to wear, uh, Kathlak, uh, father of Ethel Macklin is sitting right there. I know that she enjoys looking at that image, I'm sure. His picture appears in both the first, but definitely in the second collection. And there are other images where his wife is with him, so we, I definitely want to use that picture. Uh, 
while we have lots and lots of pictures of the 1904 Kuih, we have this picture, and I apologize for poor quality. When I um, first came um, to look at that collection, this whole digitization process hadn't started. This was in March of this year. So I was just taking pictures, my own photographs, of small prints that the park had in a folder. So this is, uh, you know, wasn't very good. Um, I came back again right before this conference and I was able to use some of the images that um, had already been digitized. But what's uh, neat about this photo is uh, I easily recognize the man on the very front. He's not wearing any kind of uh, clan regalia, but his face is familiar. It's uh, Chief Plantich, uh, a very influential leader of the Kaguantan, a high-ranking clan leader. Here he's uh, sailing, coming to Sitka with a group of men, probably are, you know, his nephews or other men from his clan. So, and he's got an American flag on his canoe. So this may not be a ceremonial event, but certainly a nice uh, addition to a whole series of pictures of Tantich. He, re I think he liked having his picture taken because there are pictures of him wearing a top hat and civilian clothes, very fancy, wearing his uh, regalia and so forth. I really like this picture. Now, this photograph um, is very nice and actually we know exactly who this man is because he also appears in the first collection and was identified a long time ago by the elders I worked with in the 80s. It's Jacob Kanagut of the Tlupnakhadi clan. He was the president of St. Michael's Society. He was very active in the Russian church. He was also a high-ranking uh, member of the Koho clan. And he's uh, um, mentioned actually in the Russian Orthodox journals. And he's wearing the sash of the St. Michael's, uh, which had the uh, tricolor, uh, colors of the Russian imperial flag. And then the various uh, stars um, and so forth. So a very handsome man. Um, and here we, we start this series of photographs of native men, presumably Tlingit, for whom we don't have names. So. If anybody recognizes them, and I think I'm going to try to put them on Facebook, because a lot of you are my Facebook friends. Um, these are pictures, photographs that Merrill took. I think he did a lot of portraits, which also suggests that people trusted him. They wanted him to take pictures. So I have no idea who this fellow is, or this one. I like that the fact that they're dressed very elegantly here, right? This one is more of a, kind of a more of a romantic portrait in a, you know, traditional hat and a blanket. There's a slight sort of echo of Curtis's photographs here. Um, there's another picture of this lady without the hat. I wish we knew who she was. Um, this is not really a portrait, or maybe it is, but this guy's standing on, on his boat. Um, I hate to, I don't know what I, I would probably print them, but again, that if we say unidentified native person, really don't like it. This man, I think he does show up in some of the photographs of the 1904 Kuih. So I think we can identify him. Also looking at these pictures, it makes me think how handsome these men and women were, you know. It's like a whole generation of incredibly handsome, and they also had very good taste <laughs> in the way they dressed, and, and also kind of vigorous. Uh, this gentleman definitely appears in, he appears in one of the photographs of a funeral. Um, so he might be either Koho, maybe Kaguantan, but uh, I think eventually we'll identify him. By the way, this project is just in its initial stages, so uh, I'm just sharing with you. Now, this guy, um, 
His features are more uh, kind of Caucasian or prob probably or maybe Russian or American native. Maybe he has a mixed descent. So maybe he's a Creole. I don't know. Be interesting to know because I'm also very interested in my new project that's related to Mero, but it's not the same. It's the history of, of the Creole community. Now, this is. Um, I was fortunate that Gil Truitt heard about my project when I was in Sitka in, Ma in March, and I want to thank Mary Miller and the park for uh, um, paying for my expenses when I came. And he said, those are my grandparents. So uh, here we have Gilbert's uh, grandparents. Now this boy, uh, that picture really goes well with the picture of the young woman. Maybe they were siblings, so they, he was doing something there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop for a second. Uh, what I like about Merrill is that he rarely <coughs> staged his pictures. I mean, if, even if this is, uh, you know, this is more of an artistic kind of, but most of his photographs are, are quite realistic. Um, there's none of this sort of, you know, Indians riding into the sunset type of photography. Um, he also doesn't primitivize native people of Alaska. Uh, I think he's way, way better than Winter and Pond um, or some of the other, like the Juno photographers. Um, he really, I think, is number one as far as. Uh, you know, early 20th century Alaska, Southeast Alaska photographers. And it definitely was trusted. Otherwise, I can't see how uh, he would have been allowed to photograph funerals, for example. Now, this is a great picture. Um, and I think in the book, I want to have a big section on Sheldon Jackson, or Sitka Training School. And that, I think, there are some reminiscences of former students that were recorded. I don't think any students from that era are alive, obviously, but we have reminiscences. Also, the school published its own paper, uh, two papers, Thinget and Verstovian. And some of these pictures were actually reprinted there. So I think you can do fairly interesting things with these photographs. And this, of course, uh, you know, you're thinking about assimilating native people, you see, turning boys into these sort of cadets. Um, I think it, it says a lot about sort of what the Presbyterian Church was trying to do. And then the girls all dressed in sort of these Victorian, uh, Victorian outfits and so forth. But it's a great, you know, great picture nonetheless. And then this is what I love. Most, the, the absolute majority of um, pictures taken on Sheldon Jackson campus are, are sort of formal, you know, regardless of the grade, whether they're young, uh, little kids, older kids, they're all standing there with their teachers or with their military, you know, officers, whatever. This is a picture that he took of these little girls, you can't see it very well, but they're playing dolls. They're like little dolls there. I think they're putting them to sleep or something. I don't know if the girls even went to that school. Maybe they're just using the campus. But it's very informal. It's very much alive. He just captured it. Um, they're having a nice time. And I think it's images like that that I particularly treasure because we have so many images from one book after another, you know, these schools that for boarding schools that force Native Americans to become you know, American. And this is a very sad story and we all heard it, but this is, this is sort of the real thing. It also, I think, shows that people still live their lives and they had fun and they played and you know, it wasn't all just misery. So I don't know, I, I just love this picture. Now, so we have, of course, some potlatch pictures we have Sheldon Jackson, then we have a number of pictures of Russian Orthodox scenes. Now, the majority of Russian Orthodox, and Russian Orthodox involving Tlingit people, of course, 
the majority of them are going to come from the first batch, from the Peter Nielsen purchase. But this one is from the second batch. I wish I could enlarge it, but you'll have to trust me. What I really like about this one, there's a caption that goes with it that says, uh, Good Friday. And uh, for those who don't know, Easter is really the number one holiday for the Orthodox Church, not Christmas. So most important holiday. They're carrying icons. They're carrying American and Russian flags. They've got a native a wind band marching up in front. Um, and I think uh, once I get a better quality print and we can enlarge it, maybe do a whole page, one can see the people in it. And actually some of the leaders of the brotherhoods, again, are gonna be identified. The priests can be identified. There's some altar boys. That's a wonderful picture. And this is, of course, the parade grounds. This was the Marine, uh, this were the Marines. Uh, there's the barracks. The church is interesting uh, because that's the Presbyterian church that was built, I think, in the 1920s because there, there had already been a Presbyterian church in Sitka, but it was on Sheldon Jackson campus. So for those white people who didn't want to pray with the native people in the same church, then they built their own. Eventually, I guess it was torn down um, because some of the church uh, leaders, leaders uh, back east felt that you know, segregation wasn't such a great thing. But this is an interesting example of this. This is my favorite picture. Again, I apologize for the quality and the fact that you can't see the faces of the people. But this is the Kostromitnov store. Uh, Sergei Kostromitnov was a Creole. Uh, even though he downplayed his native uh, roots and emphasized his Russian identity. He's standing uh, to the left of the door and to the right of the door his brother Boris, Boris. And uh, he was born uh, before the uh, transfer, but most of his life took place after and he died in 1915. He was a merchant, he was an interpreter for the US government, he spoke Tlingit, Alutic, possibly Elliot, um, standing at the bottom of the stairs, also wearing a hat, is Father Cachever, the priest. Uh, so here you have a scene, and the, the man sitting on the boardwalk on the left behind the, um, the light are Tlingit. And the woman standing up above probably is the wife of either Sergei or Boris. So this is a Creole, a very, well-established, successful Creole family. I wrote a paper about Custer Mitten that was recently published, and I used this photograph. So this is a really neat. Plus, it gives you a sense of what Sitka looked like, and we can kind of date roughly when the picture was taken. So here, Merrill is giving us a flavor of um, Creole community. Now, this is just an ordinary picture, nothing fancy. But what I like about it, we have a number of photographs from the first and the second batch of Merrill pictures of the front street. You know, the canoes, the water, this is the back. I don't know exactly what year, but I think if we sit down with some people from the village, maybe we can identify some of the homes. But again, it's just something, something real, something, um, sort of um, something's happening there. Um, this is Sitka. Uh, you know, you've got the, the steamship in the back, or, or maybe it's a Navy ship. And these guys, I think the guy, the fellow uh, bending uh, and doing something on the stone is actually cutting fish. With that little boy, yeah, they just came back with their catch. This little boy. It's sort of informal. I think that they stopped in the tracks when Merrill showed up with his camera, but it is not really staged. He didn't tell him, you know, I'm gonna come and take your picture when you come back from a fishing expedition. So, uh, interesting photo. Here, uh, I'll have to talk to somebody who knows more about Sitka history. Maybe Sitka Historical Society will help. I don't know what they're doing. Um, 
delaying something, I don't know. Uh, but it's uh, something interesting, of course, in terms of class, and there's these two non-native guys standing there sort of watching them, and of course all the workers are, are thinking. Um, is it a boardwalk? Or, I'm just not sure in where, where in Sitka this is. Um, I think on some of these um, photographs where we have images of certain places in town and around town in the vicinity of Sitka, I'll have to uh, rely on, on local historians. But I just thought, you don't find pictures like that in the first, um, the first um, 200. So I just found this fascinating. Now this is definitely, the guys are showing, their, off, showing off their catch. They caught a huge bear. Um, this one has a flaw, right? The, the man on the far right who's holding a rifle, his face and much of his body is blurred. But I still think it's worth, it's the only picture I, I can think of in the males of native hunters in that sort of, um, now we were discussing what this thing in the front is. Uh, somebody suggested it's the intestines. Um, in any case, it would be nice to know who the, the guys are, but um, they're definitely proud. Now this is more of a, I don't know if, if Meryl planned it that way, but you can read this in two ways. On the one hand, it does give you a nice kind of um, just information, right? Data on uh, summer camps, these, you know, um, where people went for summer fishing and berry picking or whatever, and the canoes. But there's also a mood. There's definitely a mood here. Um, so he's doing two things. I think he liked the, the setup, and there's a shadow, but it tells you uh, a lot about um, people's subsistence. So for, uh, for folks like Tom Thornton, who's interested in subsistence, I think this is a very valuable, and of course for native people. Or this one of a guy, I, I think he's native, of course you can't just uh, sort of make it up, but that's my impression, he just got a, a tent and, and I think he's fishing. So it's pictures like that. They're not as dramatic, eye-catching and flashy as the ones from, you know, the Great Potlatch, but I really like them. Or something like this, drying uh, herring eggs. And of course, once you figure out which uh, is a cannery on the right, you can, which cannery it is, you can, um, identify the location. So that's just a sample. I didn't want to overwhelm you. Um, this is going to take me a while because I really want to identify as much as I can about the images and then write a, a good story um, about the town that I, uh, that I loved. You know, it's considered my second home. And uh, the park has been good to me. I think they also want this project because that would really put these plates on the map, so to speak. But a lot of the uh, images will not be in the book, so um, I think the public should also take advantage of it. Any questions? Yes. Sergey, did you see any photos of the uh the fence separating uh, town from the ranch? Uh, no, but by the time he, I mean, he arrived in 1890. Yeah, so. That's an earlier. So, are there any photos of that? Yeah, they exist. Of that fence? Not many. And uh, uh, how about the, the cottage graveyard? Are there any of that, or some of the graveyards? There are some, I didn't include them. No. No, there are some great pictures of, uh, Oh, this is not a mural. There are a few pictures of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There are pictures of the cottages. I think Rebecca Polson is going to talk about the, the cottages. That's what's so nice about Maryland. He captured 
all the communions. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're also interesting. I didn't include them, but there's some nice pictures. And actually, Kelsey had a few images of the wealthy and the powerful. The uh, Tilsons, I think, were very wealthy. Uh, there are the Mills, Mills, and I mean the people who uh, you know own property and businesses. And I think I'll include some of them because that was Sitka too, and they employed Native people. And but I also include things that well, the beauty of anthropology and ethnohistory when you combine anthropology and history is that you not just work in archives, you. Uh, um, you have stories. So W.P. Mills, for example, is a wealthy merchant. But I heard from several Tlingit friends that he hated Tlingit people. And I think that kind of information belongs there. So that's kind of interesting. Um, any other questions? OK, I think, yes, Marie. Of the dates, are there any dates on uh, the uh, photographs? No. I don't think no plates. year dates like 1920, 24, 25, 30. Do you have dates on the plates? We have um, three original, what we think are three original envelopes belonging to Merrill, and those are dated 1912, I believe, 1911, 1912. Okay. Other than that, it's only been people's conjecture or what we can figure out based on what's happening in the picture. That's okay. how we're able to date it. Oh, there's something I didn't mention which actually is important. Um, at least for me, it may not be as interesting to part. Um, there are definitely Merrill photographs besides these 1,100 some pictures. They are in private hands because he took pictures of families, did portraits for native people and non-native that people just took. And I've heard that uh, in Sitka and then just out of curiosity, I was looking uh, online and then actually went to this uh, CLS Heritage uh, Institute uh, photographic collection and looked at uh, Bessie Visaya photographs that she gave. And there's one picture of uh, a native family and uh, it says there, this is Merrill. The, big, the photograph doesn't have his name stamped on it, but not all of his pictures had that. Um, and then I found another picture of, of Ralph Young, one of the founders of a &B, as a young boy or, or a young man. He's standing near a coffin of his relative. And there is a Merrill name on the picture. And it said on the back, donated. It was given to the Downhowers when they did the biography of Young. And it said, donated by Mark Jacobs, a junior. So there are Merrills out there, and I think it's very interesting. So if I was, I'm hoping that if anybody has these, uh, they maybe will share their copies, um, because that would enrich our understanding of what he did. Doesn't mean they have to be in, in the possession of this park. In fact, I was told that the park is on one family. That's not true. <laughs> if you want to donate anything, we'll, we'll take right. any marijuana. But that's a whole other story. But for me, that's anything about his relationship with uh, Native community. And also, he, the name Father of Pictures, I think the Lincoln people know what that means, but for those who don't, it uh, means that he was the master of picture taking. Hmm. I don't know what picture in Lincoln is, but Ish, Father. So like, if somebody is buying fur from Tlingit, he may be called father of fur. So I think it meant that they understood that he was a real master of that craft or art. So I think it was a term of respect. So this is something, I'm sure you know this, but I was just trying to explain. I think we should move on. And our last but not least uh, is presenter, Rebecca Paulson. She is an artist, has an MFA, Master of Fine Arts. Comes from a, <coughs> grew up in Sitka. In fact, the family owns uh, the newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Sitka Sentinel, which I used a lot for, for research. Uh, and she is the head of Alaska Historical Society. So has a great interest in, in history. And the topic is the cottage community. Is that correct? Yes. Please. <laughs> 